The government uh, continues to refuse and cancel visas on character grounds. Section 501 has not changed. In our first year of government, the number of individuals we deported from immigration detention was almost double. In a new legislation, the Australian government has begun arresting and cancelling visas of those coming to Australia to commit crimes. One individual whose visa was reinstated now stands accused of theft and murder in Brisbane. CCTV shows him tossing a bum bag full of meth on the roof before coming face to face with officers. He was. Immigration Minister Andrew Giles has since cancelled that visa and ordered an urgent review of dozens of others. Prime Minister Anthony Albanese has confirmed a new ministerial direction will be issued to deal with cases of visa cancellation. As the Minister has said, he'll be reviewing the recent AAT decisions and where necessary and appropriate. And the only effective way of ensuring that tribunal members are making better decisions is to issue a new revised direction, which the Minister will be doing. This comes after the Australian Border Force has provided new details regarding the 153 people released from immigration detention following last year's landmark NZYQ High Court ruling. Officials confirmed 10 former detainees were currently in custody. Five people have been charged with Commonwealth offences, while 29 people are facing state or territory charges. The charges include kidnapping, assault, threat to kill, weapon possession and breach of police and domestic violence orders. It has also been revealed three of those charged with state or territory offences were not being electronically monitored. Four were not under a curfew at the time of their alleged offending. Shadow Home Affairs. Minister James Patterson questioned why those released detainees were not subject to conditions. I just have to pause there and reflect that those are very serious offenses that people have been charged with who are not subject to a curfew or electronic monitoring, he said. How is it that people with a propensity to have allegedly committed such serious offenses were released from their obligations by the government. Border Force officials also confirmed two people who had previously been convicted of murder or attempted murder were not subject to electronic monitoring. How on earth can we have former murderers not being electronically monitored in the community? Senator Patterson asked. Last year's High Court ruling declared indefinite immigration detention for those who could not be deported unlawful, leading to the cohort's release. The ruling has caused major headaches for the federal government. Last month, an elderly Perth woman was allegedly attacked in a violent home invasion by a former detainee. The federal government has been under sustained criticism over the last fortnight after revelations a direction issued by the immigration minister in January last year had resulted in convicted criminals being allowed to stay in Australia. The direction had insisted immigration officials and tribunals take into account an individual's ties to the community and their time spent living in Australia when considering whether to revoke or reinstate their visa. One individual whose visa was reinstated now stands accused of murder in Brisbane. Immigration Minister Andrew Giles has since cancelled that visa and ordered an urgent review of dozens of others. The only effective way of ensuring the tribunal members are making better decisions is to issue a new revised direction, which the minister will be doing, Mr Albanese told Question Time. The new directive will ensure that the protection of the community outweighs any other consideration. The soon-to-be-superseded order known as Ministerial Direction Night 9 was signed in early 2023. It was seen as a way to address complaints by successive New Zealand governments that criminals with Kiwi citizenship but few or no ties to NZ were being deported there. The coalition seized upon rulings by the Administrative Affairs Tribunal, AAT, showing the consequences of the direction, with the tribunal having reinstated the visas of convicted rapists, armed robbers, drug smugglers and people involved in kidnapping. The immigration minister said a number of those decisions had not been grounded in common sense, and the AAT's successor, the Administrative Review Tribunal, ART, would be armed with a different ministerial edict. The new direction will ensure that all members of the ART will adopt a common-sense approach to visa decisions, 
consistent with the intent of Ministerial Direction 99. Mr Giles told Question Time, First and foremost, this means ensuring that the protection of the community outweighs other considerations. This has always been the Albanese government's highest priority. The revised direction will also strengthen the principles of community safety in the making of decisions, including the impact of the decisions on the victims of crime and their family members, and also strengthen the family violence provisions to reflect the government's and Australians' more broadly commitment to end violence against women and children. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more.